Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, Coffee Science Seminar. Um, my name is Mike Gidley. I am the director of the Center for Nutrition and Food Sciences in Coffee, and it's my pleasure to be the host for this uh, uh, for this session. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. On behalf of the traditional owners, I pay respect to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognize their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today's seminar uh, will go for a maximum of one hour. Um, and a, a most important message before we start, please be thinking of questions all the way through the seminar. Uh, please put them into the Q&A function that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please try not to use the chat function, please use the Q&A function. And if you can put the questions in as they occur to you, then uh, we can address them at the end. Uh, the, the, this, uh, this session will be a little bit unusual in that uh, the question and answer session will be handled by uh, Professor Eugenie Aurora. Um, and uh, so at the end of the session, it will be he who will, who will ask the questions on behalf of the audience. So without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Marta Navarro. Marta is a, a postdoctoral researcher in the uh, Center for Nutrition and Food Sciences. Her background uh, as a farm animal veterinarian and nutritionist uh, over an extensive career, both in Spain and Australia. Uh, she completed a PhD at UQ in 2016 uh, and has uh, developed her uh, research career in monogastric animal nutrition. Uh, with a focus on pigs and poultry and today she's going to be talking about one aspect of her past work on pigs uh, more related to the meat quality uh, and so I'll pass the, the the floor over to you Marta and please deliver your seminar and then we'll do the Q&A afterwards please everyone put your questions in the Q&A tab throughout the seminar over to you Marta thank you Mike I do acknowledge the traditional owners at the custodianship of the land and I pay my respect to their ancestors and their descendants. Um, thank you, Mike, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present the outcomes of this project funded by the Australian Pig Limited, aiming to create a pork with Australian pork flavor signature. This project was peculiar as we have the unique opportunity to work from farm to fork, literally. Let me give you a short update about the pig industry. Australian pig production uh, and I need to read it, is in a sweet moment with a gross value of 1.5 billion last fiscal year, which was 25 higher than previous years. Queensland is right now the largest producer of pig in Australia, accounting with 24% uh, of the total production. Um, Australian exports value with a, uh, Australian export pork with a value of 139 million in 2020, in 2020 were 18% higher than previous year. And globally, there is also a strong demand for pork, and 80% of this growing demand is in Asia, led by China. Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> sorry, I lost my uh, here. The desire for meat is growing, but meat shoppers are also more demanding when marking, making purchase decision. And recent surveys confirmed that this purchase decision is based on values like sustainability, health, production transparency, where welfare and the use of antibiotics, hormones and other drugs is close regarded, and finally, shopping convenience. For pork, consumers have ranked flavor as one of the main drivers in their buying choice, followed by tenderness, juiciness and roasted notes as positive attributes. However, in China, traceability is the main concern for the pork consumers. To differentiate the Australian pork, and develop a loyal market in the international arena, Australian pig industry is looking to create a quality level. I chose Australian pork because 
Previous research in our group, in our group analyzed how the fatty acid profiles from pork fat can impact the aroma of cooked pork. Pork from commercial hybrid pig with low intramuscular fat was compared with Iberian pork with high intramuscular fat. Those studies show that the main difference in flavor release after cooking pork hams from both breeds were related to the mufa pufa content of the fat, but not in the level of intramuscular fat. More precisely, the high mufa content in the Iberico pork resulted in higher values of aroma compounds from Maillard reaction, which are related to rose flavors and a higher overall flavor lacking. In contrast, the high PUFA content in the commercial crossbreed partially inhibit Maillard aroma compounds, resulting in lower positive sensory ratings. What is the component of the Iberian porks that makes the difference? The answer is the high amount of acorn nuts in the diet, which was confirmed by Lebret in 2008, when the same breed was read in a confined conventional diet compared with a free range regime. The sensory characteristics of pork aroma and flavor intensity was influenced, influenced by the diet in the same breed. A corn, nut, a corn nuts main characteristic is that they, are, they have high levels of oleic acid. To rephrase to all of us about the description of fatty acids and the acronyms I will be using during my presentation, I have prepared this summary. As you know, fatty acids are the building blocks of the body fats with important metabolic activities. Generally, a fatty acid consists in a string change of even numbers of carbons with hydrogen atoms along the length of the chain and with a carboxyl group in one of the ends that make it acid. The fatty acids are classified by the length of the chain and by the level of saturation of hydrogens. If the carbon to carbon bonds are all single, the acid is saturated. In any, if any of the bonds is double or triple, like in here or in here, the acid is unsaturated. If there is only one double bond that it, then is referred as monounsaturated or MUFA. If it if has more than one double bond, then it's called polyinsaturated, like in this case, the linoleic acid. The situation of those double bonds and the conformation of the molecule is at another level of complexity, but the presence of the different, but the presence of the different isomers on the fatty acids were not in the scope of this work. Oleic acid, this molecule that I um, uh, post here, is the most common MUFA, while linoleic acid in the base is the most common PUFA. In Australia, we don't have acorns, but we have a native nut, macadamia, which, according to our colleague Tom, Tim O'Hare, is actually a very rich source of oleic acid with around 60 to 60 percent of his fat and with an ex exceptional low content of linoleic acid around two percent of the fat with all this information on board this project was designed to reply the industry call to produce a pork with a distinctive, distinctively pleasant bouquet using oleic acid rich fed in pigs with an australian signature in this case was the macadamia nut. Oil acid, oleic acid, is the most common MUFA in plant and animal tissue and in human diet. As you know, it, it's been associated with health by decreasing the bad cholesterol in blood, protecting against cardiovascular disease, aging, etc. Animals, including pigs, produces naturally oleic acid, which is primarily stored in the back fat. Across pig breads, oleic acid is around 30 to 40 percent of the total fat, a total fat, uh, fatty acid in the back fat. But exogenous intake of fatty acid are more used in the intramuscular fat by the pig, 
which make the composition of the intramuscular fat more influenceable. So increase the levels of oleic acid in intramuscular fat is considered a, qual a quality criterion for pork. As mentioned before, this project closed the circle, starting in the farm with the dietary interventions in the pig, where we also controlled weekly the normal growth of the animals into the abattoir, collecting carcass information, then to the meat, to the lab to collect the meat physiological parameters of the, of the pork, and finally to the consumer through a sensory trial. I made the board. But not all the pigs eat the same feed. Our working hypothesis were that oleic acid from macadamia will produce a pork with intramuscular fat high in oleic acid that will produce a pleasant bouquet during roasting, but also that different diet formulations containing different type of grains and pulses will influence the transfer of oleic acid from feed to muscle tissue. To prove that, three different isoenergetic and isoproteic feed formulas were developed. The three different diets aimed to, representative, aimed to be representative of three standard diets used in Australia, Europe, and North America. A diet based on corn as main cereal and soybean as main source of protein was chosen as a representative of diets produced in North America. That in here. A diet based on wheat and canola oil was representative of diets produced in Europe and in Australia. And a diet with sorghum and lupins, and lupins aimed to represent the uniquely Australian, maybe Queenslander, type of formulation. Corn oil was used as a source of polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFA, while macadamia oil was a source of monounsaturated unsaturated fatty acids, or PUFA. I lost again. The analysis of the fatty acid profiles of the oils reported similar levels of saturated fat fats between both oils, 17 and for corn oil versus 18 for macadamia oil. MUFA levels were oleic as the main component followed by palmito oleic, were almost double in the macadamia oil compared with the corn oil, 79 versus 38. And in the opposite way, PUFA levels, mainly linoleic acid, were higher in corn oil, 45% of the fat compared with the level in the macadamia, which was only almost 3%. The ratio MUFA-PUFA in, in the macadamia oil was 36 times higher than in the corn oil. This is a visual image of how different the fatty acid profile for each feed was in percentage of the fat. On top, from left to right, is the corn soil, um, the sorghum lupins or the wheat canola in browns, the three of that on top with corn, supplemented with corn oil, while in the base, they are the same diets in the same order, but supplemented with macadamia oil. Macadamia, compared to the corn oil, resulted in higher levels of oleic acid, 25% higher in the corn soil diet, 27% higher in the sorghum lupins uh, macadamia diet, and 45% higher in the wheat diet, and lower linoleic acid content, 35% lower in the corn, 28% lower in the sorghum, or 35% so lower in the wheat canola um, feed. The final ratio, mufa pufa, was 65% higher in the macadamia oil feeds, fats. At the farm, we use 36 finisher pigs individually penned. The pigs were growth from 50 to almost 110 kilos of body weight. 
The main performance parameters were recorded weekly. The, fin the body weight, the every, every week we weight the animals, the average daily gain, so the, the rate of growing daily, and the feed intake, the average daily feed intake, how, how much feed they were eating daily. Um, the main performance parameters recorded were not affected by the main effects, diet or oil source. And this is not surprised as the signs the number of animals were insufficient to detect, to detect any difference in performance. We did record a significant interaction between diet and oil in the average daily gain, showing that macadamia may have improved the weight gain of the animals fed with wheat. In here, they were heaviest, but not in the other diets. In any case, performance studies were not in the scope of this work because the low number of animals. At the end of the growth, pigs were sent to the abattoir in Kingaroy. At the abattoir, 45 minutes after slaughter, muscle pH and temperature and hot carcass weight were measured as a standard procedure. Any of these, para any of these parameters show a difference between treatments, as you can see here uh, with the statistical results. 24 hours after a slower, a slaughter, we witnesses the deboning of the carcasses from our experiment, separating the loins, which is this part of the pork, from the rest of the carcass. We collected a small piece of two ribs, two ribs here, the, um, from the right loin for the physicochemical analysis. Both loins for the 36 carcasses were labeled and vacuum sealed to be used in the sensorial trial. The 72 loins were sent to, the to a commercial refrigeration facility to mature for one week at four degrees. Then the samples were commercially transported to the health and food safety precinct at Cooper's Plains, where were kept frozen until use. As mentioned before, the two, the two ribs were immediately transported to the lab for the analysis of the typical physicochemical parameters related with quality, like water holding, measuring the drip loss, oxidation, measure, doing a, a T-bars test, uh, a T-barbituric uh, reaction test, the texture using the Warnet Brazil shear force, and uh, the cooking gloss from fresh and also um, unfrozen samples. Overall, we didn't find any difference in any parameters in that, uh, in that um, um, lab work. In the case of the pH, we, yes, we did find some, in, some significant interactions between main effects, diet and oil. And this is important because high pH in pork is associated with positive sensory attributes. Pork that is high in pH is juicier and tends to be more tender compared with a normal pH. In the opposite way, pork with a lower pH is lighter in color, have lower, lower water holding capacity, less intense flavor, drier and tougher than normal pH. In the literature, Pork with, litter, with lighter greenish color is being reported as a problem when pigs are fed with corn-based corn diets. However, in our study, supplemented macadamia oil in corn diet increased here the pH, while in the other two diets decreased the pH of the samples. And we explain it that uh, we explain this effect because high MUFA may promote oxidative, oxidative stability in pork. Sorry for this busy table, but I want to show you that feeding macadamia oil resulted, resulted in loin samples with higher oleic levels, 38, 36, and 38% for corn, uh, sorghum, and wheat diets that feeding corn oil that was 33 
35 and 36 percent for the three diets. The difference were significant for the corn, um, for the corn-based diets in here, and the value is here. Then we realized that the efficiency of oleic acid transferred from feed to loin was fat to loin fat was dependent of the diet type. Comparing the low levels of different fatty acids in the feed and in the pork for and in the pork for each one percent increase of the oleic acid contained in the feed, the increase of oleic acid in the loin was fifteen percent in the corn, but only one percent in sorghum and three percent in wheat diet. We interpreted that the corn diet facilitated a more efficient transfer of the oleic acid from feed to pork loin fat. By contrast, sorghum diet seems to have a very limited transfer of oleic to intramuscular fat. Overall, the, feed, the pigs fed with macadamia oil showed an increase in the MUFA levels here and here, and a decrease in the PUFA levels. And this was more significant for corn soys and for wheat canola but uh, not for the sorghum lupins diet. Failing the sorghum, the sorghum based feed to transfer the MUFA to the intramuscular fat. Another interesting effect we found was the composition of the juice released from the pork during the cooking. We speculated that higher MUFA content in the juice dropping from the stick at cooking could stimulate caramelized notes from the Maillard reaction during grilling, enhancing the tasty roasted flavor after cooking. As expected, the pork fatty acid profile influenced the, the juice profile. The level of fat in the juice of macadamia fed pigs tended to be higher in the corn oil, that in the corn oil group. The fatty acid profiles observed in the juice follow a similar pattern that they obtained in the pork. Regardless of the diet, the group supplemented with macadamia oil had higher MUFA, lower PUFA, and higher MUFA-PUFA ratio than the corn oil fed group. This effect was more pronounced in the wheat-based group. To finalize the study, two sensory trials were designed. One with trained panelists led by Dr. Heather Smythe with the objective to standardize the sensory protocol and to create a list of descriptors for the pork. A second, a second sensory trial was organized at UQ with untrained panelists, including a cohort of Chinese consumers with less than one year of staying in Australia. The trial panelists pointed that loins from the sorghum group released a strong aroma of poached chinks, chicken compared with the other two groups. The panel reported a significant interaction with, between oil sources and feed formulation, indicating that macadamia oil showed higher values that macadamia showed higher values than the corn oil in the corn and the wheat yep, diets, while it was the opposite in the sorghum diet. Based on this outcome, the samples from the sorghum diet were excluded for the consumer test because the interaction observed between feed formulation and fat resulted in a masking effect of the fatty acid profile. Addition, as mentioned before, the pork from the sorghum dietary group did not report a difference in the, rate, in the ratio MUFA-PUFA between the corn or macadamia supplemented um, group. The volunteers for the consumer sensory trial were recruited from the University of, of Queensland in San Lucia campus. Advertised were placed around the university with the participant recruitment poster in English but also in Chinese to encourage Chinese consumers to participate in this, uh, um, in this sensory trial. Uh, the consumer 
sensory trial uh, had 80, at the end 82 panelists um, with a total of 58 females, 24 males. 39% um, of the panelists were Chinese and 43 were non-Chinese with non-Chinese background. A recruitment questionnaire was pre presented to all participants requiring details of uh, age, demography, history of taste disorder or impairment, smoking status, pregnancy, food allergy or any intolerance, and drug or medication used. As mentioned before, based on the learning from the training panelists, sensory trial, the number of samples were tested. The, the number of samples tested was reduced in order to facilitate a good assessment by avoiding sensory fatigue. Three of the initial six dietary treatments were selected to evaluate the two main hypotheses, high MUFA, which were high MUFA PUFA ratio will improve pork flavor after cooking, or Australian feed formulation based on locally produced cereals and pulses will improve pork flavor compared to a corn soy based model. To assess these two hypotheses, the sample to assess hypothesis one, the samples with the highest and the lowest mufa pufa ratio were selected. In this case, the wheat canola macadamia as the highest and the corn, so the corn um, soy corn as the lowest mufa pufa ratio. To assess hypothesis two, the wheat feed with macadamia was compared with the corn feed with macadamia as well. Two sensory, some, two sensory sessions were designed, one for each hypothesis. The panelists received a tray, including the pore samples, a questionnaire, water, and several pieces of green apples to clean the mouth between samples. The pork samples were provided to the participants in pairs. The participants were asked to rate each sample based on his aroma, appearance, and pork flavor, pleasantness from dislike using this um, um, questionnaire from dislike to extreme like. Then they were asked to answer seven questions related to juiciness, tenderness, fattiness, and other sensory characteristics on a scale from one to nine. Finally, Participants were asked to annotate whether they believe the samples were different and if they had a preference between any of the two samples. This procedure was repeated five times, totaling six sets of two samples. The pork was roasted just before the test in the kitchen of the sensory lab at Harley Tickle building. Samples were grilled without salt, spices or any additional fats. The sticks were sliced post-cooking and the pieces placed in the small aluminium trays we saw before, labeled and served to the panelists. This table summarizes the different descriptors in here across the different diets, the different dietary groups, corn soy corn, corn soy macadamia or wheat canola macadamia based on the average of the consumer panelist score across ethnicity and gender. The corn soy macadamia samples were ranked consistently higher than the wheat canola macadamia or even higher than the, whoop, the corn soy corn samples across all the 10 selected attributes. The difference were statistically relevant for juiciness, tenderness, fattiness, and fatty flavor. All this in here. The difference were statistical, um, sorry, the caramelized notes, notes, the caramelized notes show it a trend favoring always the same diet, which was the corn soy macadamia. This figure shows the pair comparison. 
when supplements with macadamia, when supplemented with macadamia, which is in this case, pot diet with macadamia, pork from corn diet was consistently, this one, created more valued by consumers than the wheat diet. The comparison between high versus low MUFA PUFA ratio, which was this comparison, showed a trend in the pleasantness of the consumers. Finally, the unpaired analysis of the two corn groups differing in oil, corn soil and corn oil and corn soil with macadamia oil confirmed an improvement in attributes associated with the macadamia, with positive, uh, with positive effects of the macadamia, like pleasantness, fatty flavor, and caramelized notes. Here, pleasantness, caramelized, and fatty flavor. <clears throat> Which Proof the main hypothesis that the taste of the pork samples high in oleic and mufa puffer ratio associated with macadamia oil resulted in highest hedonic value. In terms of ethnicity, it was statistically relevant for aroma, here, pleasantness, juiciness, tenderness, and fattiness, indicating that Chinese panelists scored lower than non-Chinese um, consumers across all, the, all these um, attributes. There was a significant diet effect in here, showing higher score for juiciness, tenderness, fattiness, and intensities, always with the same diet, the corn, soy, macadamia diet, compared to the other diets. Indicating an increased place, indicating that the Chinese, um, Chinese consumer rating this diet, this diet higher than the other two diets. Although in uh, non-Chinese uh, consumers was not different. This is to the problem that the cultural background had a very significant impact in the sensory evaluations of the pork. Although on average, the Chinese panelists ranked all the pork attributes lower than the non-Chinese group, the qualitative assessment of key pork attributes were consistent among both cohorts. Overall, we proved that higher oleic acid and mufa pufa ratio in the intramuscular fat of the pork improved the hedonic value of the grilled loins. Some cereals and pulses used in Australia for pig feeds may interfere in the absorption and or the position of the mufa in the pig tissue. Ethnicity or cultural background has a very significant impact on sensor and sensory evaluations of pork. In this study, Chinese panelists ranked all pork attributes consistently lower than the non-Chinese panelists. However, Chinese and non-Chinese consumers have similar preference regarding the pork flavor. Finally, I want to thank you, APL, for funding the project, some pork people to facilitate the animal trials and the sample collection in the abattoir, we want to thank Professor Dan Shea for his advice in the big diet formulation, Associate Professor Smythe for the trained panelist session, Professor Kist for his advice in the design of the consumer sensory trial, Alan Lai for his passion and statistical advice, and uh, Sharam and other students from Rora Group for all the help during the consumer test. And now I want to thank you all of you for attending this seminar. All right, um, excellent uh, seminar, Marta, well done indeed. Uh, we are thrashing here with lots of questions and also um, congratulations for your job for a number of um, the uh, attendants. Um, let me just then start with a few of the questions we're receiving. First one regards to, and sent by Robin, thanks Robin for this. Um, she would like to know, a bit of the economics of feeding macadamia 
oil to pigs. Is that feasible? Do you see that? No, it's not feasible industry? at all. It's not feasible to use macadamia oil. This, this project was a proof of concept, but the production of the macadamia oil um, produces a waste or a byproduct, which is called the macadamia meal. Macadamia meal uh, is affordable for the use in fact. In, in, in fact, I know that it's already used and it still contains um, almost 8% of oleic acid. So it's a good source of oleic, uh, of oleic acid that can be introduced cost effectively in the pig, in the pig feed. All right, thank you. Um, uh, Pat Blackall would like to know um, what 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 uh, sex were the pigs and, and whether that would have an impact on the um, I guess the the position of uh, oleic acid or or the uh, efficacy of um, macadamia oil. In this trial, we use um, male pigs, but uh, immunocastrated male pigs. So all the animals were the same. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, and it's in the literature, that uh, the deposition of the different fatty acids profiles can vary a little, a little bit in, in, in between sex. But in this case, to reduce the variability, we only use it males and uh, um, immunocastrated, uh, which is the normal practice in the pig industry today. Thank you. Um, Craig Harner, I'm, I'm just reading your um, uh, question here, see if, if, it, if, if it makes sense. Uh, Craig says thanks um, and says, can we really uh, call this uh, a uniquely Australian diet when pigs feed on macadamia in other countries, uh, particularly in, in Hawaii? where consumption by what pigs is a major source of loss of the nuts. And they actually produce very desirable meat, according to Craig. Um, so how Australian would, would the diet with macadamia be, uh, Marta? Well, um, macadamia is a, is, a, is a native nut from Australia, not from Hawaii. That is the first. So Hawaii, Hawaiians are producing macadamia, but um, but it's not Australian. And then macadamia production in Australia is very high. So these uh, waste products, potential waste products are available to try to reproduce uh, the, what in Iberico is the, 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 corn, the corn flavor. So um, we don't have uh, that I am aware any other source of uh, oleic acid that is more Australian than uh, macadamia. So yeah. I, I would also add here, because in the past we've been doing quite a bit of work on how oleic acid impacts uh, uh, volatile compounds, and it is possible to define uh, a specific pattern of volatile compounds related to oleic acid, but if we're the first ones uh, defining that pattern um, through related to the Australian pigs, then, then it's the Australian signature. So whoever defines it first will, will get the name, I guess. Um, more questions. Um, Robin is, is mentioning that um, maybe the number of repl replications, six, is a bit short, uh, say for biophysical um, parameters where where would be um, maybe the minimum is 12, but I guess statistics, um, I don't know, that's a question for you, Mata. Um, well, again, that was a proof of concept. We had, we first had to know if that was feasible. So, so the, the transfer, to how the transfer the, of, uh, of the oleic acid and all the fatty acids were working in such different diets. Uh, and uh, um, the thing is that uh, we had we produce uh, a lot of different diet and, and this uh, uh, was uh, um, difficult. So in the case of more animals and, and, uh, and, and more replicates, for us, uh, the cost of the project would uh, increase a lot. So we decided that six, uh, a number of, uh, an N of six for each uh, group was enough to prove the concept. So yes, it's it's uh, I, as I as I said before, uh, even for performance, uh, the 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 number of animals were too low to have a, a good uh, um, 
a good outcome. But um, again, it was a proof of concept. So we wanted to know it was possible if the macadamia all would work and, um, and how we, if we were possible, able to measure this in a, in a sensorial trial. We have a question from uh, Dr. Sharam Niknafs. Um, he would like to know whether other than fatty acids would have an impact uh, uh, on, on the sensory proper properties of the pork, um, meaning other compounds in macadamia oil, I guess. Um, do, you do you see that as, as a possibility? I don't understand. So if, uh, if there are other um, ah, so so to co to have a, an Australia signature using other than fatty acids. Well, we need to explore that. Obviously, macadamia oil is not only about um, mufa; it's got other fatty acids. In yeah, well, macadamia oil is quite unique because it's very high in mufas but very low in pufas, which is uh, is not the case in in all the sources of oleic acid. So in that case, uh, the level of Pufa is the, mu the level of pufa is also very important. It's high mufas, but low pufas. The ratio is important. So, yes, I'm sure that there can be other byproducts. I am thinking you know, in, the, in the production of oil, olive oil or canola oil, that also are very rich in, in oleic acid. And uh, we can explore. But uh, it's both uh, high MUFAs and low PUFAs that uh, make the difference. Um, thank you. Uh, we have a, one more question from Pat, and, and he would like to know whether one of the three diets that we use would somehow be relevant to China, since we're using Chinese panelists, I guess. Um, 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 I guess that is the, the wheat canola, because um, Corn, corn, soy, or maybe I, I'm not sure what is the production of uh, soy in China, but it's quite uh, centered in, in, in Brazil and, and, and USA. I guess that will be the wheat canola, um, the closest to what the China uh, production is using right now. But I'm not sure. I can, I can, I can check that for you, Pat. Well, what, I, what I know is that it's not, not Australian wheat. No, no, not Australian wheat now. <laughs> Ukraine and wheat, or or uh, from 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 other from European countries. Oh, they produce probably his own wheat. I'm not sure. Um, Craig Harner uh, would like to know whether we have any idea if the higher quantity of palmitoic acid in macadamia could add that distinctive taste, I guess, um, or, or, or we insist that it's, it's mainly oleic acid. Well, I, I'm not sure if it's oleic or palmito oleic, but what I is sure, and, uh, and Tim has a fantastic work published in, the, in that area, is that uh, oleic acid is the highest in the, in the fatty acid profile of the macadamia. Palmito oleic, now from memory, I think that is um, um, oleic is around 60, 60 plus percent, and palmito oleic is around 15 to 20 percent. So mostly of the uh, mufas from uh, macadamia oil are from the, the oleic acid. Yes, we also did quite a bit of work. Um, a PhD student of mine, Hugh Bennett, he did quite a lot of uh, tracing uh, volatile compounds from uh, macadamia, oh, from oleic acid rich pork. And, and, and we did uh, find that it was mainly the, um, the derivatives of oleic acid that were making the difference in terms of comparing the two different ports, high and low in oleic acid. So it was mainly related to oleic acid. So I was quite certain that oleic acid will play a, a big role there. Um, Lo Hoffman, thanks Lo. Um, he would like to know if higher MUFA would result in softer subcutaneous fat, which could become an issue uh, when processing the meat uh, into products such as bacon and others. Um, yeah, I was, I was studying this uh, with chickens, in fact, in, 
in Spain a lot of years ago. And, uh, and then you have to maybe include more uh, antioxidants in the diet. But the, the, what, uh, what uh, we know is uh, by the literature is that uh, the manipulation of the fatty acids in the diet, uh, what we are doing is mainly manipulating the intramuscular, uh, intramuscular fat. Not the not the back fat, not the subcutaneous fat. So, yeah, maybe um, partially, but uh, basically, what we are manipulated is the intramuscular fat. Mm -hmm. um, Robin was was wondering whether that pH that you showed of five point thirty seven, whether that was very low uh, according to her standards. Uh, any comment on that? Um, but that's more of a comment than a question, to be honest. No, it, would, it was. Uh, I compared it with other, with literature review. Uh, we collected all the, all the pH with uh, with an instrument that, in fact, is specific for meat. So, is the values that uh, that uh, that uh, we obtained it, and uh, we did the sensory trials with this meat. And I can tell you it was delicious. So maybe she, I, I, when I when I compare our values with uh, all the values in the in the literature, didn't 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 take my attention. What what we found was that uh, was the was consistent across the different diets. In fact, so. All right. Um, one more question from Craig. Thank you, Craig. Um, He's, he's having a great idea here of using some losses in the nut industry uh, from development of rancidity. And um, he's, uh, he's wondering whether that rancidity could in fact influence the pork taste. Uh, but, oh, yes, if the, if the fat is rancid, um, I think remember that uh, that, uh, that can turn in also rancidity nodes in the pork. So, um, it will certainly influence. I it. guess that the, the fresher the, the, the better. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would certainly influence obviously oxidizes fat. Yeah. Anyway, um, any other question? I think we've gone through most of the questions. If I didn't forget anyone, I'm just checking here the, the chat. We had maybe some more questions in the chat, but I think we, we've gone through most. So, uh, um, well, uh, let me just uh, uh, remind uh, everyone that um, uh, next week uh, seminar um, on Tuesday, 15th of June, is uh, entitled From Lab to Orchard uh, and Beyond, and will be presented by uh, Alice Hoyward. So I, um, we, I hope you will all be able to attend. Uh, visit the Coffee Science uh, Seminar webpage for more information now. And, uh, and I think we're going to give it a, a finish. Uh, Marta, thank you so much. You did a fantastic job. Well done indeed. And uh, thank you for attending uh, our science seminar. Please uh, do the poll at the end. Uh, and if you um, haven't already signed up for our seminar invitation list, please uh, do so at coffeeuqedu.au slash science seminars. And, and I think that's all. Thank you so much uh, and bye-bye.